Like a moth to a flame, it pulls the same. Next thing we know, we're in a now bear's den. Tomorrow, I know it all begins again. But where we're needed, we will go. And I'll go. And we're live. Thank you all for joining us for this evening's Heroes of the Plains new episode. We are really, really excited to jump into this tonight. As you can probably see, we are short a B-Dave tonight, but we have a wonderful special guest with us, Omega Jones. Omega, we normally don't do this at the beginning, but would you like to introduce yourself, what you've got going on, and where people can find you real quick? Oh God! Um, you can find me everywhere at Critical Bard because I'm literally everywhere, including you know the Clock app. Uh, hi, um, yeah, my name is Omega Jones, also known as Critical Bard. I'm an actor, vocalist, hot mess incarnate, if you will, uh, a professional tabletop player. Very happy to be playing with these wonderful friends of mine. Uh, very thankful to be asked to be here. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait to uh, have some fun. Uh, yeah, if you want to know what I'm doing, just look at my socials. <laughs> hot mess incarnate is going to be something that i aspire to add to my resume one day so thank you for being here with us tonight omega call out to a few sponsors here tonight and then we're going to turn it over to todd for whatever chaos is going to reign here tonight but first of all we have idol champions of the forgotten realms incredible game that has many of these characters in it so you can unlock us there is so much red panda activity going Yay. on for idol champions <laughs> like I, is it tomorrow like when yep. that stuff starts yeah so all kinds of red panda activity there's red panda briv and alindra and all that freely and all these other characters coming Rift. out the judgiest of all grifts looks yeah, deeply flow. unhappy there, there is a red panda flow that is wearing like the little oh it's amazing so you got to check out idol champions of the forgotten realms you can get a code for a free electrum chest right there on the screen so check that out play idol champions it's incredible also we have sirenscape because epic games need epic sound we might uh be a little short on some of the music here tonight because we're 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 coming into this hot on the production side but at some point i'm sure we're going to have music and sirenscape is the place that we use and you should check that out for your games as well i've been using it for i guess four years at this point at my own tables and really love what sirenscape does and then finally we have a new sponsor that we had last week as well hero forge and Hero Forge makes these incredible. Yes, so if you can see what's going on on, I can't Lauren's refocus screen. the camera, but <laughs> but there's there's my Orkira. Orkira, there is. Uh, I, that's just you, Jen. Right? That's just me. That was yeah. a gift from my players Jen, so, uh, for DMing. Yeah. So Hero Forge makes incredible miniatures for your games, and what is so great about those is you don't have to open the blind. Uh, you know, uh, booster packs or anything like that, hoping that you get exactly what you need. On Hero Forge, you can make exactly what you want with thousands and thousands of 3D assets. Uh, it, it really is something else. So you got to check out heroforge.com. And we have a giveaway tonight. So pay attention to chat. You'll see all the instructions for how that's going to work. Um, I think it happens about an hour in. You can come and enter that in chat and win a $75 gift card on hero forge which is enough to get something really really nice for yourself so check that out as well i think that's everything todd turning it over to you that's too much pressure uh <laughs> so uh previously you all ran through a bridge that had a headless horseman without the horse a doulahan and you used a skull and a death mask to teleport yourselves to mordent with freely 
you did make it through and past this Dullahan, and you crossed the misty border into Mordent. At this time, uh, Freely decided to go out alone after a great deal of debate and perhaps an improv invisibility spell was cast as well. He went on his own to investigate as to uh, some of his own origins in Mordent, uh, as well as a mysterious sword that he seems to be linked to. However, at the moment, we're not with the group. At the moment, we are with CB's character. Can you describe your character on the edge of the, the misty border of Mordent? Yeah, I can. Um, <clears throat> you, the camera's looking at them. Um, you see bright blue crystalline eyes staring off, looking around, almost scanning and scoping. Um, these eyes belong to a six foot three ish uh, warforged individual, um, robotic um, in nature. Uh, they are wearing a dark shirt with a brown vest over that. Um, as well as a darker uh, overcoat uh, to conceal and just make sure that, you know, they're kind of blending into this new area. Uh, in their hand is a glowing um, rune inscribed uh, revolver. Uh, and they're just staying firm, watching. They seem to wear um, a Stetson type of hat, but at closer glance, it's actually a part of their being um, more so to be a protective shield overhead um, as he is um, someone who was meant to be a guardian um, and probably the weirdest thing um, other than uh, the belt that also seems to have like an, a slight aura to it um, engraved with a dwarven face um, is the somewhat human beard growing from their from their chin though it's mixed with a little bit of bronze wiring as well uh, and yeah that is who is there <clears throat> okay uh, and what is your character's name again they are guardian zero zero y8 but you can call them Wyatt <laughs> so Wyatt you are on the the misty border of Mordent you have you've lived here for almost like 25 years at this point um, Warforged do stick out a bit in Mordent, so you're used to kind of like covering your tracks. You're on the edge of the mist and you see the fog, and ahead of you, you see uh, what looks like a, a, a wagon and signs of a scuffle. You see tracks leading up to it right up against the fog that you know as the border, which many people in Mordent aren't even aware exists but you are aware of it. At the same time, our group of adventurers, the Heroes of the Plains, at, you emerged from the mist and you see a wagon off to your right. And you see a, a tall, dark figure with a wide brim hat in the far distance. And up on the cliff, far behind them, you see a city. What, are, what is everyone doing? Does anyone else see that person standing over there? Hello? Okay, good. I thought that was another ghost. Oh, good. So, <laughs> from my position, where do I see them? You see them, they're right on the edge of the border. Right on the edge of the border. And then where's the, the wagon um, uh, in conjunction to them? Exactly on the edge of the border as well. Not in the same area as they are. It's maybe, I would say, a 500, 1,000 feet away from them, further up the border. Gotcha. And, and you can already tell they are, they're new in town. Uh, they're, they're not dressed in the normal uh, clothes that those that uh, live in Morden wear. Uh, you all would see him not moving but staring at you and you also see him whispering to someone and he's saying <clears throat> Wynan why do you think new folk have come here? That shouldn't be possible I'm aware Wyver just let me let me see 
Wynan, you're being loud now. Can you please calm down? And you're just having a small conversation with someone, but he's watching. I'd like to look around for this other person because if I can see Wyatt's lips and they're speaking in common, I know what they're saying. Same. Interesting. How do you feel Wyatt's lips interact? Um, there's definitely a, an open and close that happens with them. Um, okay. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, I will say Alindra and also Orkira can see that far. Uh, there are like streaks. You you feel the extreme amount of humidity in the air compared to where you were just now at. Uh, you can hear the ocean in the distance crashing against the shore very close by and you can uh, read the lips of Wyatt. So yeah, Penelope has initiated friendship maneuvers, so I am just looking around for this other person, trying to make sure that we're not immediately surrounded when we enter this how, place. And how far is Wyatt from us? I would say, uh, well, I really need my distances down. Uh, I, I would say only, <clears throat> no, for real. We, it doesn't we should have to be all, numbers. Like, it, can just, it can just be like a football field away or a, a block away. Like a, bit, a, bit, a bit of a silhouette. Okay, so pretty far. Very far, yeah. Okay. Okay, um, well, it seems that they have two people with them, perhaps. Okay, okay. Two what people. We do? Two. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I would be cautious about anyone we meet here. You see the figures start walking towards oh, you. Yes. I'm gonna hit like with a message. Two friends, Penelope. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope so, because I don't know what to expect in a place like this. We, it's so different. Be prepared in case they try and attack or something. Uh, okay. Whittle, Whittle is going to send them a message. Okay. Uh, uh, hello. Um, we don't we don't mean you mean you any harm. We're uh, we're new here. I I don't know if that's very obvious. Who are you and why are you invading my mind? I'm sorry. It's this uh, ability that I have. Um, my name's Whittle, and um, these are my friends. We're actually here looking for something really important because we have a big battle ahead of us. Um, is it okay if, if we approach you? Are you here to cause more trouble? No. I will not hesitate to shoot. More more trouble? No. I mean, no, we could. No trouble. But... This is message. Oh, uh, never mind. Are, are, yeah. are they going back and forth like this? In message? I, I, yeah. I, I, uh, okay. I, I'll allow it. Because okay. <laughs> <Thank laughs> <you. laughs> happened. Indeed, flourish. Yeah. Uh, while, while this conversation is happening, you, you are also seeing like sand is it, it, the wind is extreme right now, and it's just blowing sand and almost like snakes across the ground in front of everyone, off this, to the, off to the left. This is very ominous. I'm still walking towards the uh, the, the group right now. Okay. Yeah, I I thought Barovia was ominous, and this is like. Even extra ominous. Uh, Whittle, uh, did, uh, did you get anything? Like, they're coming this way. I mean, I, I didn't really get uh, affirmative that we could approach them, but they appear to be walking towards us, so... Okay. I think we should just be prepared in case this goes badly, perhaps. I'm prepared I'm... to run. <laughs> All right, you, uh, you both close the distance, and you meet each other. Hmm. How did you get here? That should not be possible. <gasps> Use this mask and this thing, and and the wind went across a bridge, and and now we're here. And um, hello, hello, hello. Um, uh, is it okay that we're friends now? Who are you? I am Guardian Zero Zero Y Eight, but you can call me Wyatt. And hello, can Wyatt. I, can everyone describe themselves as well to Wyatt? Certainly, and you see a uh, a moon elf uh, with with uh, like a very blue gray marble kind of toned skin and uh, very uh, light blue and white hair. Um, she has a uh, an owl flying around or perched on her shoulder, and then there is a a young blue dragon um, also nearby. Um, she's wearing scale mail and is is carrying a shield um, and has a 
a large mace where the top looks like a spell book. It's engraved with a number of different runes and words um, and a, a long sword at her side. Um, and yes, that's uh, me. <laughs> you see Penelope? Green eyes, piercing green eyes. Penelope is the tiniest little halfling you've ever seen. And she looks like a big bush because she wears a cloak of the forest floor and she's got a mess of red hair and these bright emerald eyes and a spray of freckles. When you look at Whittle, you can't quite figure out what they are. They are quite small, um, just shy of five feet, long grayish hair, red eyes, fangs, very awkwardly muscular, which is new <laughs> to Whittle. Oh, I forgot about that. She, um, uh, she has a form-fitting outfit on. It is made out of black cloth and uh, silver. Um, with form-fitting leather straps holding various guns and daggers. Um, her, she holds a blunderbuss uh, that is very large. Yeah, standing protectively, probably right behind Penelope, is a very tall, lanky, gold dragonborn with very large wings and a tail. She's in um, very worn scale mail armor and has a pack slung over one side, kind of tied at the shoulder, and a, a red book at her hip, and is constantly looking around at everything, at every sound, at every everything that moves. And um, last but certainly not least, you see the most devastatingly handsome half-orc <laughs> that you have ever laid eyes on that right now is wearing a loincloth uh, kind of toga situation um, and little else. He does have some boots on. Um, and um, as you are approaching, uh, not knowing what's going on, almost reflexively um, little, almost like strands of metal are kind of just flicking out of, of his skin, uh, this and that. And it's uh, starting to form into uh, what looks like some kind of, uh, you know, uh, metal shell of armor around his body. Now, to be clear, the very handsome orc that you saw was on the cover of Tusk Club, which is being held by, <laughs> About I think, Penelope. Four. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was it. And then there's Briv. Yeah. And then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Briv, you're handsome in our eyes. No. If you okay. are not enemies then perhaps you are <laughs> now you know it's okay um i don't really trust too many people either it's, you can take your time getting to know us uh i are you from here i am not i oh. am from a ways away i was trapped here about 25 years ago trapped hey. it was a long Who time you? The mist. You cannot just walk in and out, which is why it we is very do. interesting that you have. We had to go do a little bit of fetch questing in order to be able to do this. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to get out, but like Penelope said, we're here to retrieve a sword in order to help kill a vampire. A vampire. I don't... I don't... I... I have seen vampires before. I've seen dampiers before. I have heard of the, you know, the famous one, um, but I've never seen them. Um, do I have any recollection of what they might be talking about? Uh, you know, news from between the two domains is pretty inconsistent. So uh, you may know. not have. Uh, you've heard a lot of rumors about the Devil Strahd, but you know, you've heard that he's a werewolf. You've heard that he's a vampire. You've you've heard a lot of weird stuff about uh, that. Their kind of persona is bigger than life, or unlife, depends. So you, yeah, you, you and you've fought vampires before. I've killed vampires before. Well, apparently this one takes more than just sunlight and uh, a lot of fire. This one takes a special sword. So, um... Dost thou know anything about that? It's supposed to be here. There are many swords in Mordent. I am sure you can go to a weaponsmith and find one. 
second? Yeah, this one... Alundra, can you describe it? Because usually it's... Freely can just do the thing, and we don't have Freely to do the thing. Oh, well, I, I, I believe I can do the thing as well, and I can oh. minor, I can minor illusion, uh, the an, a small version. This is the small version. It's in actuality much larger. We believe. You, you never know. It could be forged by gnomes. Um, but it, it, it's, uh, it's just a handle, and then the blade is made of pure light. It radiates glowing light. Have I ever heard of this? You've heard of it, yeah, for sure, but you've never seen it. Okay. And what is an interesting thing you wield? I believe I have heard of it once upon a time, but I do not know where it could be. Hmm. Um, Wyatt, uh, you said you were a guardian. What were you guarding, or who, whom were you guarding? My master. And who is your master? They are gone. I'm sorry. They are not dead. They are just gone. I'm still sorry. So I feel like this is a point where we are supposed to offer empathy, I believe they have told me, but we are kind of in a hurry about the sword. So I don't mean to be rude. That but... word does not... Hmm, it does not... Hmm, it does not... Hmm, I do not know it. Uh, Empathy? Oh, then we're okay then. Uh, yes, let, let, let's move on. Like, we need to find the source. So, so Wyatt, you've lived here for, for 25 years. Can you tell us a bit about Mordant? We're new here. We don't know much about the place, the customs, the people. Um, anything important that we should know? Just don't stay out for too long. The ghosts like to make friends. Oh, oh yeah, we, we, we know about the ghosts. Friends. No, you cannot be their friend, Wyver. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, who, who's Wyver? My sibling. Uh, where, where are they? Yeah, where? They are dead. Oh. Oh. And Alindra sorry, takes just a that. half step backwards. <laughs> we Yet heard now are you... still talking to them? They are. The ghost spirits, they seem to like me. Specifically, two of my siblings, Wyver and Y9, were, well, killed here, and now they stay with me. You were all here and they died? All ten of us and our master, but most got away. Wyver and Wyvern did not, and Y9 did not. We, we were warned that if you die here, that your ghost gets stuck here. You can't be brought back. That is true. Uh, so that's why it'd be really so, important for us to find the sword and get out of here quick. Do yeah. they know where the sword is? Why would they know where the sword is? They are dead. Uh, just because I do you're not dead. know empathy, but I so, do know... Mm, I will not use that word. That might be offensive. Oh, I've heard worse. I, so I have true sight, which allows me to see into the ethereal plane. Do I see two spirits with Wyatt? Yeah. Oh. You see, see a lot more than that. Yeah. <laughs> bad feeling. Uh, you <laughs> see, you see two spirits uh, with Wyatt that seem friendly, and then you see what almost <clears throat> kind of seems like a ballroom of upset spirits keeping their distance from even Wyatt. And what time of day is it right now? I mean, it has to be noon. <laughs> Would it be? Is it high noon? High noon? <laughs> I mean, I was uh, asking. Uh, the uh, elevation is very high. You are correct. <laughs> okay, that's good. Good to know. It's super good to know. I do um, not know what time of day it is. Time seems to just move on its own. I'm assuming there's a, I mean, it's not, it's not Barovia in a sense where it's always dark, but is there a? No, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's still very, I mean, Mordant, it's, Mordant's extremely, there's a lot of rain, there's a lot of moisture. It's a coast, coastal area. It's certainly 
previously in other versions was right next to Ravenloft itself. So it still has a little bit more, the same atmosphere, but I would say like extreme winds, you know, a lot, lots of ocean flavor. You know, this, the air always smells of salt. Um, so uh, yeah, it's very, very kind of Northwest or really evil East Coast forest. Mm. So, if I remember correctly, Freely said that he remembers putting the sword in uh, the sewers. sewers. Yeah, yes. like the sewers that we experienced, um, you know, before. So, pretty pretty big sewers. Um, we should you probably... don't want to go in the sewers here. That would be quite a bad idea. Why? Do you know what the Mind Flayer is? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, yes. yes. Well, if you didn't know, you would become very much acquainted. Okay, sewers equals mind flares, but also sewer could also equal sword? Uh, Wyatt, I, I need a survival check from you or Kira and Alindra. And anyone else who wants to. Okay. Curry? Survival check? Yeah. No. So oh. I abstain. I have a plus nine. Ooh, I got 21. I got 22. Uh, 17. 22. I imagine Willow is like taking out like all of the weird periscopes and uh, <laughs> all yes. of the lenses, compasses, or, sextants. <laughs> or Kara and Will, you you see several footprints in um, in the sand that have just recently been wiped away, but you still see their impressions. And you see that kind of overturned wagon. And as you kind of like peer at that wagon a little closer, that's right on the edge of the misty border, you see it's blackened and broken apart into pieces as if there was some sort of explosion. I'm going to confer with Whittle because between <laughs> the two of us, we are experts on all things that would cause fire. Hey, Whittle, do you think this scorch mark means it's like a bomb or like a fireball or um, what, what do you think? Do I need to roll to figure out what it is. No, I will say your combined knowledge of fire. <laughs> uh, this looks like an explosion that was not the de de detonation of a fireball. It looks somewhat accidental and there are multiple areas of impact. So maybe several things on the wagon exploded at the time. As I look over, oh. um, I say, I was heading to that wagon actually before I saw you. I was curious What's about that? it. I don't know. <gasps> now let's check it out. Uh, the, the, the same thing kind of happened a while back when I was preparing to uh, fight the vampire. Um, I, I had a whole bunch of uh, alchemist fire. It's very explosive. I wonder if maybe that's what happened here. I am aware of alchemist fire, potentially. But again, I do not know. Widow, <laughs> you can tell there's a couple of things on his person. You can tell that he's a tinkerer of sorts as well. I think uh, we're going to get along. Um, can you tell us a bit more about Morgent? If there's, if there are important places and people we should know, uh, customs, uh, customary practices, what are the local foods, what are the uh, uh, types of fences that we could commit accidentally? Um, what is if some of the someone laws, sees perhaps? you on behest of Lord Godifroy, Run. Uh, Lord Godfrey? Yes. How do we know if someone's on behest of them? Are any of you, and I'll like scan for a moment, would any of you consider yourself a magical genius of sorts? <laughs> genius? No. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a Lindra. I'm no genius. I'm not a genius. I'm just, I, I work hard and try and study and... Yeah, she's a genius. I'm a magical so genius. Yeah, brave too, but in a different way. Just your spit. Then you should keep your head down or you probably will die. Okay, protect Alindra. Got it. I do not die. I do the... D die... The, the killing. What's your armor class, Briv? Oh. Uh, oh, I think 19. Let's see. Yes, 19. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and I am aware of certain wild magic rolls that will come into play later, so don't worry about that. But uh, you take 17 points of damage. You get shot by a shell at this exact moment. When you raise your hand, I'm a mu- magical genius, just bam, right through your palm. <gasps> Where'd that come from? Where'd it go? What? Yeah, I immediately turn and look. A nightmarish distance. Like, you you hear the sound, and, and your ears perk up as well as yours, Alindra, and it is easily 600 feet away. Um, can we see the person? You cannot. Can we hide behind the wagon? I thought yes, we were around the wagon, but sure. <laughs> Wait, so was that... Like, right. already they're here trying to shoot us? So are people hiding behind the wagon, but, or are yes, people going to, like, have but, a lengthy conversation about the bullet? But also, no, I think hiding, <laughs> is, non- hiding is a better option if they're shooting at us. Would, would non-detection Bro- 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 is... help me right now? Oh, sorry. Non-detection uh, n- help her. Non-detection is just going to prevent people from locating an object or a person through magical means. It's like, prevents magical tracking, basically. Mm-hmm. So, if you're being tracked, maybe but you're going to have to cast magic public, like out in the open to, to use it. Once the hole goes through, Briv literally like looks through it to try to get a trajectory and then uh, start, <laughs> uh, t- takes off running. Um, and I'm not ch- just completely trying to expose myself, but if there is anything that I can zigzag and stop along the way, um, he is going to actually form uh, steadfast into a shield and then he is going to just start running uh, t- toward wherever he thinks that shot came from. Okay, uh, let's let's b- buff your armor class up by two because it's now a shield. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just start running. And uh, I will use subtle spell to cast non-detection on myself. Wyatt, at the same moment as you are like very close to this uh, wagon, you see both of your siblings on the very edge of the misty border slumped down not like they not violently not from an explosion not like someone just destroyed them as if they walked up to the border and then sat down with half of their bodies in the mist like i see the physical versions of my siblings physical not... ones the physical ones the their bodies the the but the spirits are still with me yes I my eyes zoom in and I don't care what this metal man is doing. I'm going towards the bodies. Okay. You uh, start heading towards the bodies and it becomes even more upsettingly apparent that they're half in, half out. Like they just stopped at the border. Uh, I am going to roll a bunch of things. Briv, you are zigzagging from like driftwood and I, rocks. I, one other quick thing, like if, you know, if turns are happening here, like on my turn, I'm going to be laying hands on myself as well. Not okay. in public, please. <laughs> Good, go ahead. Talked about about this. Hands. We've talked yeah. about this. I, I will be following Briv. I will uh, do my best to also zigzag, but I don't have any metal that I could make a shield out of. But as soon as Briv takes off, I will fly, fly after him. All right. So um, I'll do... I, I'll come back up to full on one turn uh, with the lay on hands. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to continue to, um, you know, st- stay at a certain uh, hit point threshold uh, until I get to where I can investigate wherever this is coming from. Wow. Okay. Um, so you are going to take, you here 12 shots ring out. And you take only two shots hit you and you take 35 points of damage piercing okay um so two, two shots hit you can i now that you i want to interfere with one i yeah. don't think i'm close enough to did one of them hit briv within four of his armor class absolutely all right are, are you trying to stay within close oh yeah. Uh, yeah if he takes off there's going to be a moment and then our is like Oh crap! And then she'll go after. Um, okay. So yeah. Uh, I'll I'll try one of my wings. Up. I'm flying after him because that's the only way that I can keep up. And I I kind of scooch forward really fast and try to knock him out of the way of one of those. 
If I take off one, does it help? Uh, go ahead and just have the damage to make it simple. So the, those shots are ringing out at you, Briv, as you are zigzagging and you're getting increasingly closer to like this kind of sand ridge where there's a bunch of, uh, you know, weeds basically creating kind of a berm in the sand ahead of the town. Uh, why and everybody else, what are you doing? Uh, Penelope has gone into shrub mode, put on her Chewinga mask, and she sees that Wyatt is kind of wandered off, and she must, she thinks something, he must know something, or they must know something, so she's like, hey, where are you going? She's gonna, like, shrub over with him. With him. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about Briv, but Okira's there, so I think there's at least one parent should stay with the rest of the the children. Um, so I will stay with Penelope and Wyatt and Whittle. I don't know where Whittle's going, so. Um, Whittle is next it's... to the wagon. Um, she has cast non-detection using subtle spell on herself, um, just in case it couldn't hurt. Um, would it be possible for her to cast mislead and make a uh, double of herself to follow Briv both and Akira. Yeah, both are leveled spells. Okay. So not, not I wasn't round. sure because I'm not in combat right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you are definitely not in combat, so I will allow you. Yeah, go ahead and cast mislead as well. Okay. Um, my my double follows them as as more of a distraction. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and I'm going to the bodies because that's those are my siblings. Yeah, you go up to the bodies. They they appear to have their wounds repaired as you knew them. Mm -hmm. They seem to be actually in immaculate shape. But there is no life force left in them of any kind, and they were clearly walking. You see the steps in the sand. The wagon that's overturned is full of a few potions that are still, like, there's this kind of this amalgamation of liquid and ooze from all these potions that kind of have exploded in the area uh, from some kind of accident. It seems unrelated. But I'm they with... both are sitting there half in the, in the mist. I'm going to try to pull their bodies back to see what happened. Like, because Wyatt, all Riot remembers is blacking out seeing them on the ground blacking out afterwards uh after as his master and the rest of the siblings escaped um trying to hold down the fort so he didn't realize that they had moved or like anything like that so this is like completely new for him right all right uh penelope what are you doing looking over his shoulder okay uh, i mean like you know Looking over his <laughs> knee. <laughs> Looking between his legs. <laughs> uh, Briv, as you continue to run with Arcara, the, the, the gunshots stop. Uh, by the way, I am yelling like a wild man as yeah. I'm going. Like I am going to just completely skewer every single one of whatever this is. Yeah, uh, after like 12 shots, I mean, after only one of them manages to hit, they all stop. Um, or Carrie, you get closer and you don't see any, you see steps in the sand already disappearing, but you don't see anything. How many pairs of steps? Oh, t 12. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was one gunslinger or 12 people so no no clearly you can already see that there were 12 people like sitting in the sand up against the the berm in the sand firing uh, some kind of long range pistol and i don't see any of these 12 i don't see the, the they're steps. gone do you see okay. where the tracks are leading you see briefly where the tracks were initially leading and they're leading to mordant um you said the, that they were that would be the city yeah Mord they, Mordenshire, sorry. Yeah. 
Uh, they were leaned up against the the sand, and so there's impressions there. Can I at least tell, like, what kind of clothing they were wearing? Were they wearing boots? Were these humanoids? Were these... What, can I get some sense of what these creatures were? Go ahead and give me an investigation check. Uh, Briv, you get up there as well, and you see several spent shells as they've been firing like, these long-range rifles. I actually rolled well. I rolled a 16. Ooh, nice. 17 minus 1. These were humanoids for sure. Okay. And, and you can even smell human in the sand still. Why were they shooting at us? We haven't even been here for five minutes and already got 12 people shooting at us? Briv, do you, do you know anything about, I mean, I know what guns are, but do you know anything about any of this? I have not the foggiest idea of what is going on, but they certainly were smart to run. And I'm just like yelling as loud as I can. And um, I'm picking up a shell mm -hmm. um, and I concentrate on it just a little bit. And then I say, let me see what I can find. And I cast locate creature. Mm. Um, trying to see if they are still within a thousand feet. And I'm basically uh, going to say, uh, Orkira, I, I am not certain where the others are, but I am going to get to the bottom of this, and I'm going to continue to move toward the city. Uh, Briv, oh, let's not run too far. If they've run away, we should get our friends. I don't want to be split up from everybody. But grabbing I, the shell's a good idea. I don't want to lose them, and so I will go as slowly as I can. But... Uh, but but I am I am heading to try to find out why these creatures attacked us. Uh, I shall be fine. I'm the god of bravery. This makes Orkira even more anxious. She's gonna also scoop up like a, just a handful of shells, stuff them in her pack, and say, oh, "I'll go get the others." And I want to blitz back to the cart as quickly as I can. Br Briv starts to kind of slowly walk ahead. And he's like looking over his shoulder at Orkira. And then as soon as he thinks that she won't notice, he takes off running. I would like to remind two. Briv, I have a 30 passive perception. So, <laughs> And also yes. Whittle is running right next to Briv, her, her double. Oh, oh your double ca caught up? So yeah. Briv, like, can you like, can you emote and understand what's happening with that double? Or is it yeah. completely like- Yeah, I can okay. see through their eyes. Okay, I started to say, well, can you talk through the double? I think so, right? Oh, yeah, I'll allow it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, because you can fine. cast. Yeah, I, I, I that's can't fine. Cast I just want to see anything through I it, was... but I can talk. I just my my actual self cannot talk. I'm pretty much paralyzed while I have a double. Perfect. I am so glad that thou art here, Whittle, because or oh, wait, thou art the real Whittle, right? Art I mean, the the, devil, the, fi or? the fine real, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not in like danger or anything okay. it, actually if you wanted to stop here and and let me keep going like there's no danger in me going ahead and just oh, letting no, you no, know no. Da danger okay. does not concern me what actually concerns me is if something happens to me and or kira or alindra find out that i went off by myself then i am going to get some kind of scolding and i left home and my mate and my children where i wouldn't have to listen to scoldings no, so got, therefore, got you. nope. Your secret's uh, safe with me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell him me. you went so far. Oh well, I didn't even think of that eventuality. So I'm glad that thou did say that. But what I am saying is, if something happens, then I can tell thee what is going on, and so then thou canst relay that to the others, where it won't seem so irresponsible. <laughs> Have I reached the cart <laughs> at this point? Since I've blitzed back. Yes, you've. You've reached the cart, and you can see Whittle just talking to herself with her eyes, like, white, or, like, blood red when she's doing mislead, mm -hmm. uh, uh, speaking to Briv. I land. Briv's being irresponsible and running after the people who shot at uh, us. I was again? able to convince him to, like, slow down, but uh, you, you know me. I'm not going to be able to stop him, so uh, we should we should go. But there's something uh, was, happening. Well, yeah, while all this is happening, I was grabbing the bodies and bringing them out. And, like, what, what, what have I seen with that? Like, he said half of it's out of the mist and half of it's As air. you pull both the bodies out, it is as if all the color was drained out of the front of their metal. All of the energy. And it's hard to describe, but you know how you just, 
know people and you're like, this is something feels kind of alien and foreign about them. Not that there's like a smell, but the energy that is kind of coming off of them is not your siblings. It's as if, as if something else was in them. I'll just look at them and I'll speak, speaking to my siblings. What happened? Do you remember any of this? We do not know. Can can I see the ghosts and see how they're, they're responding to this? Uh, they look horrified and confused, and both his siblings seem to uh, uh, they their siblings seem to have moved back. You see a very different energy, and with your true sight, you can kind of see a war forged energy and a a human energy, and there is a human en- energy surrounding these two dead war forged remnants some kind of corrupted magic around them that is kind of fading off of these two war forged bodies I do not know what happened but they don't know either which is a problem that's definitely worrying um why it were your siblings human no, we were all created by our master. Created from what and for what purpose? To be his guardian, as he did his research across the plains. And who was your master? You actually see them pause. They are master. They do not have a name? Yes, it is master. Understood. I'm so sorry. What happened to your metal friend? He went running after the people who shot at us. Do you have any idea why it, why anyone would shoot at us? I'm going to ask about that. But, you but don't. I, I don't? <laughs> mm, I mean, I mean, it might be because you are warforged or people from people are from out of town, but you you do keep a low profile on purpose. I do, I do. Okay, I was just thinking. Uh, it's not that firearms are are like uncommon, but a lot of people don't typically use them. So a bunch of people using them at once, being Highly a unusual. gunslinger, he's like, okay. But if I don't know, I don't know, and that's valid. No, 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 you, no, no. Gunfire is extremely unusual mordant. Oh, so, yeah. So you being who you are and them shooting over at you seems seems a wee bit unusual. Uh, at the same time, Briff, yeah, you do get a sense uh, directly uh, within a thousand feet where they are heading uh, at, the, at this moment. Uh, you also hear a whispering voice in your ears. For a moment, just a brief moment. Is that Braver, you flow? A gift. And you you look at the one wound you got from a bullet hole that was starting to fester, actually. Green and pus. And the bullet pops out. And the poison leaves your body and oozes out down your chest. And you are suddenly immune to poison. Ew. <laughs> Uh, Whittle, the you feel uh pain in your body, not the not in terms of your illusionary illusory self, but suddenly you all see Whittle just hulk out and get big and like Ugh. all shoulders, all arms, and oh. Whittle becomes an entire size larger. Whittle, not yeah. so Whittle. She doesn't respond to you because she's misleading, but um, does, does, her, <laughs> does her illusory self also hulk out next to Briv? Uh, it is a perfect replica. Yeah, so you see this very upsetting <laughs> version of Whittle that is now uh, your size, Briv, and has this, like, 
tons of fangs. Not just two fangs, but like a full shark's row of teeth. And so she, now I was holding she, out on nope. some type of supplement, or... <laughs> nope, nope, yes. nope. <laughs> yeah, the muscles are very, very, very big. You, it, it's a wee bit upsetting. And suddenly, uh, uh, Penelope, you can see in the dark very well. <gasps> Is it dark? <laughs> it's high noon. <laughs> You're like there's a shadow. You see in the shadow shadows between, uh, super good. Yeah, from yeah. Up between uh, Wyatt's. <laughs> I do not know who was the one to shoot at your friend, and therefore us. But that is probably a bad thing. Um. So Wyatt, you were saying that magic users are in danger here. Is that is magic illegal here? Is it? Uh, what did you mean by that? No, magic is not illegal, but I do not know why. Every now and then, there is a force sent out going after those who seem to be much more adept at magic, but not specifically just magic, the study of it. Uh-oh. You mean what? like a force? Like a, like a ripple? Like a wave? No, like people or spirits. Oh. Like 12 people with really powerful guns? Hmm. That seemed strange. There is not a lot of gunfire here. Not well, other than me, at least. Th that was a lot. And if we had been here for more than just a couple of minutes, I would put those two things together and say, uh, Alindra, Whittle, they're going after the two of you. That makes sense. But we just got here. How could they even know we were here already? You pass through the mist. Yeah. And the one who is the lord of this place probably can sit in. I don't know. Uh, and can you tell us more about the lord? We, we should walk as we talk here. I actually can't. I don't know anything else. Um, yeah, we should definitely go after um, the other Whittle and Briv. Uh, Wyatt, do you, do you want to bring the, the bodies along or something? I mean, we can, I can try to help put them at... at I don't know, what do you do here? I'm not sure what to do when you can't. I will deal with them later. Was I there anything? I believe it should be dealt with right now. Was there anything in the wagon? Uh, everything has been kind of destroyed. Like there's a few healing potions, um, stuff like that. And certainly okay. there I were mean, balls of Why not? Fire. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, many, how many healing potions are there? I'll say five. Regular or? Uh, regular. Okay, and that, and that what else was healing. in there? Uh, there were pre there are a couple of vials of alchemist fire. Okay. Yes. Grab those two. Okay. How many of those? Uh, two. Okay. And anything else that would indicate that who the people were, what they were doing here, why they were? Lots of scientific ex uh, uh, instruments. Oh, any books? No books. But uh, gauges and all sorts of other things that Have you I don't even recognize. Okay. Um, any other bodies? No other bodies. Any ghosts that seem to be gravitating toward it? Uh, you can see ghosts on the horizon, weirdly absent of ghosts. Okay. Something feels extremely unnatural. Yeah, you can tell why it is very confused. Even though he's been here for a while, he doesn't seem to know what's going on. Yeah, you still you see with true sight the just kind of the lingering energy of two humans on these warforged, and that's it. Uh, Briv, you and Whittle, illusionary Whittle, you. Uh, you continue to be able to locate one of these uh, gunslingers and they have run down some coastal steps towards what looks like an old cannery uh, below Mordenshire down by the down by the ocean Good. this is a little bit of an atom gap a cannery like putting like peaches in jars yeah okay factory okay. <laughs> there's a scent there's a smell like Briv's probably had a few things from a can so all right. And so um, just go. So I catch a visual of them going down the stairs. 
Uh, yes, you see Peel rushing in. Okay, so as that happens, then um, Briv. So this cannery. Are there places to flank the building? But basically, the main thing I'm trying to do now is trying to um, kind of case the joint a little bit to make sure that they're not just passing through the cannery. I want to be as certain as I can reliably be that they are staying in there, and then I will not rush into that by myself. It definitely appears that they are staying in there. Okay. Um, there are signs everywhere, or like there are chains across the walkway that this area is closed off. And the cannery itself is in a complete state of ruin. There's broken glass and eroding stone. This place has not been operational in maybe a hundred years. Are there other buildings next to it? There's other buildings like sheds and stuff like that, certainly. And there's a rotted out dock, but that's about it. Okay, so there's no place for me to get um, any kind of altitude. Uh, to to like oh, uh, yeah. scan 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 over the joint. You while can scan I'm over it. Over. Go ahead and okay. give me a survival check or an insight check. Okay. Uh, Whittle, you are there still in your hulked out form. Mm-hmm. So uh, have... sixteen insight. Okay. Uh, Whittle, you can also do an insight check since okay. you are there in a, an illusion. So form. at some point we have to rouse Whittle though, right? Back where we are to get her walking with us. Yeah, I don't think I can carry um, Big Whittle. <laughs> well, no, she, she, can, she, can, she can snap back when she wants to. Yeah, I'm going to say well, that you're at least aware. If, if, if you can't hear or see while you're in mislead, then we have to find a way to get you out of it to come By back. By touch. To, yeah. I'll allow touch. So we'll have to wake you up and you'll have to drop your mislead at some point soon because we need to move. Yeah, like if there's an emergency situation, definitely. Do you think we've set up something in advance? Like, hey, if you need me to come back, to tap my shoulder three times or Blank poke me in the head or you, something you, like that? You've seen Willow do this. Like, oh, we Whittle. also have the telepathic. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, do oh, we yeah. have that going on? Yeah, that's that's a constant. I put that on every time we, we can. Is there a range on that? This plane uh, of existence. Cool. Plane of existence, yeah. <gasps> wow. Okay. So yeah. then Brib uh, says, they have made their way to a cannery. And I know what that is because I have eaten many things out of cans over the years. <laughs> and so therefore, I have them trapped inside and I shall wait for all of thee. Will, give me an insight check as well, please. Uh, that was a 23. Okay. You see, uh, for a place that should be shut down in your, your illusion self, you actually see lots of footprints that are not human. That are metal. I think there's been a lot of things here that uh, seem pretty similar to our new friend, Wyatt. To the extent that the stairs themselves have been bowed. The stone stairs have been kind of chipped and frayed and scratched over and over and over again. As is, as if several metallic boot boots have kind of walked up these stairs. Does seeing this make Whittle nostalgic at all? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, semi-nostalgic in some way, but this is uh, clumsy. That's definitely not Renz. I remember when Renz and I were living in the side of the cliff together, uh, he would always destroy any any steps that I make, um, but he, he was a little bit more graceful. Uh, I, I definitely can empathize with the because I destroy many things that people make as well. Uh, Did I use that right? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming we're walking and talking, right? Well, y'all yeah. are walking well, and, and telep tele telepathically talking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So did you want us to take the the bodies so our hero would turn he, to you he no he, he said this is something i will deal with later i am more curious about this now okay how long you have your siblings been dead 25 years so from the time you arrived from the time they left well, you arrived 25 years ago though correct 
I arrived 25 years ago with my siblings and my master. There was a big fight. They died. I didn't die. They left. Who were you fighting? A bunch of things. They seem to want my master. Mm. Are you at all familiar with a cannery nearby here? Am I familiar with a cannery? There's no cannery in Morden. What is a cannery? Uh, it's a place where you put stuff in a can. Apparently that's where the gunman that shot at us, that's where Briv and uh, Illusory Whittle followed them to. There is uh, no cannery in Mordenshire. What are you speaking of? I'm going to go ahead and say that you guys gently push uh, Physical Whittle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just like kind of a nudge. You know, like when, you know, someone's sleeping next to you and you're just like, turn on your side and they just do it <laughs> or whatever. Like, you're just like pushing Whittle forward and Whittle, Physical Whittle is just kind of walking. You get to this uh, cliff edge where the steps run all the way down to a cannery. You, however, Wyatt, you do not see steps. You just see a cliff edge, and you see no cannery. You just see the ocean. What are you speaking of? There is nothing here. You don't see the stairs or the building. We, we see it? You all see it. Oh, I they're, have true they're sight close on. enough to us I now. also see it? Yeah, it's there. Right. It's, tr it's truly there. Hail, companions. I have trapped them in this cannery. How do you see something that is not here? How do you not? It's right there. Go ahead and give me an intelligence check uh, plus your investigation. Who? Me? Uh, sorry, Wyatt. Intel is your investigation check? Yeah. Uh, 18. It arouses your suspicion and you concentrate more and it's as if uh, you had blurry vision before and it just kind of coalesces. You suddenly see steps kind of get created right in front of you and a cannery out of some kind of misty illusion that was preventing you from seeing this place. And you see these steps that have been just been chipped away over years and years of time of metal boots that have cracked away at these steps walking up from this building. You see my eyes kind of closing on themselves uh, as they readjust and there's a brightness. Um, that is strange. I am not really used to magic, but that seems... Like it was illusory. You Someone can see was pre preventing you from seeing the cannery? Potentially, because I have never seen it, nor have I heard of it. That and I can see like a lot. The cannery. I do not understand the reference. Damn it. Damn. <laughs> Damn. And we go on. Oh, okay. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seeing, this, seeing this, you see I flick my revolver and the uh, barrel like kind of spins for a second. I like look and make sure that everything's in there. And if anybody is looking, you only see one bullet. Um, and then I flick it back um, and I begin to walk towards because I don't like that. Okay. You start moving forward. I'll look, over, I'll look over at everybody and say, following our new friend. I think so. Let's find let's find Riven Whittle. Oh, I oh, thought, I we thought... Were right there. Yeah. <laughs> they're right there. there. Right okay. There. okay. Yeah, we're in the cannery. Well, I think I suppose. No, you're not in the cannery. You are outside the cannery. Outside. Good day the to cannery. A cannery. I have um, trapped them in. Might we is it can uh can Griff fly around and see what what's in there? What what we're dealing with? Uh, the moment Griff tries to fly in, uh, where do you where do you want Griff to try to fly in? There's like several broken windows. I mean, around the outside, just kind of looking, peering in. Yeah, uh, Griff disintegrates as he crosses a barrier. Mm. 
obviously Griff doesn't die. But something... There's some kind of protective barrier from sight. Okay, I have true sight on. Yes, true sight is not a catch-all for every magic, but um, you, you, you see the true... There is no illusion, but something canceled him out as, as Griff flew through. Did we see Griff, this, this owl, just like go through and just... Oh, like green energy explodes and sparks. So, I don't know. Um, so, uh, Wyatt is in front. Uh, Wyatt, if you're continuing on, that's fine. But like, if, if that makes you pause at all, Briv's going to continue to walk past and I'm just going to be trying to stick my sword into whatever that is. But Wyatt would actually... Sorry, there's, there's bug in here. Um, Wyatt would actually, um, seeing that, he will pause for a second. And if you do move, one hand goes out to stop. Another hand goes up and shoots just to see what happens Ooh, to the bullet. That works better. Uh, you hear a pop and whiz as it goes in there. And you see, you think you see green sparks as well. Did it go, did it go through the barrier? Did it look like it got stopped at a barrier or, or went through and hit something? Uh, it sounded like it got evaporated. <laughs> Do we have a, an idea at this point where this barrier might be, at least on one side? Yeah, you, you move around the barrier. Uh, well, it, it seems very much structured. I would say the way things just seem to have disintegrated, because you witness what happened to Griff, and you witness what happened to the bullet, it's a very thin barrier all around it. Uh, Brib is going to just pick up, like, any loose stones, anything he can find, and, like, start, like, chucking it at the thing to see what happens. And may I cast Detect Magic so I can get a sense of where this... Mm -hmm. When you cast attack magic, you you see the complete barrier. Okay. Yeah. Does it completely encircle the place? Is are, is there a door? Is there? It's a... not a circle. It's on all of own. It's um. Hmm. It's almost shoddy magic. It's almost like th this person isn't like a hundred percent great at this type of thing, or maybe the something else is also interfering with magic. But it's only covering the open areas. So any, any area where there's a broken window or there's a crack in a door, that's filled with this kind of green energy. Okay. But there's almost like not enough power to fill the whole space. So it's only filling the holes. Does it seem like the sort of thing that removing magic would, would be effective? Or does this seem like we just need to break through a wall? Uh, it does seem it is definitely magical, and you do feel like you have the power and the wherewithal to confront that. Another so quick question. Mm-hmm. Because I'm asking at the same time, because all this kind of happened at once, Briff threw a rock. Yes. Briff is magic. My bullet is magic. The rock isn't. Does the rock go through? The rock also gets disintegrated. Then it's magic or mundane. I was trying to figure it out. Thank you. Yeah. So, Penelope, I believe you might be able to remove the magic here. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, does dispel magic work for everyone to see it or just the person who cast it? A detect magic is only the person who cast it, but I can point point out where it okay. is if you want to. Okay, dispel magic. How do you dispel magic using nature? Um... <laughs> You just see Penelope kind of stomp her foot and you see like these roots kind of just grow out of them and, and into whatever's magical to just yeah, break these, that circuit. <laughs> yeah, these roots just kind of grow into the magic and like separate it and push it apart kind of in the way that roots kind of like grow into a rock and separate and turn it into dirt. Uh, your vines and your roots do so to this magic, and you kind of see it just disintegrate before you, Alindra. And there's no more magic there? No. Um, do you want to throw another rock? I'm going to bring back Griff. 
if I can. I, uh, I I start to throw rock, and then I'm like, wait, we may need something bigger. Where's that sex tent everyone was talking about earlier? Or uh, we're just uh, checking the barrier, not not needing to find directions. Oh, I mean, so I direct- just it's a navigational tool. Wait, the the what tent? <laughs> Why it starts walking? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you find uh, a set of double doors that have a chain across them. Um, As he's walking forward real quick, just so that I have a, a visual, is this a one-story building, a two-story building? Two-story building, for sure. And do I see any footprints of the 12 people who came running on in here? Oh, yes, you do. Where did they run in? Through the chain door. Okay. Is it a chain with a lock? It is a magical chain, yeah. And Elinder, you see that as well. Excellent. Um, I do have knock. So yes. Okay. Let's see here. Um, hmm. All right. Yeah, I would go and you'll see um, one of my fingers kind of open up and um, the outer shell of it goes down. And it's, of course, it's the middle finger. Um, as you see um, a, a lock picking mechanism um, come out, but I see it and go, this looks like this might not work but I could try. Yeah, you're welcome to if you'd like. My option is a bit noisier, so... I will... Tr- because he's there, he will try to lockpick, uh, unlock this door, this, this chain with uh, his Steve stools. Is there a... Uh, okay, so you go go and roll me a, a lockpicking check. Mm-hmm. Um... So it's gonna be. While he's doing that, is there a window anywhere nearby these double doors? Either right above. Yeah, a... there absolutely is. Should I make okay. that dex based? Oh yeah, it's it okay. Is. I'm just making sure. Uh, so I'm gonna roll a d10. Let me do twenty and not ten. Because I can't do that separately. Twenty two. Alindra, you know that he, they should not be able to do this. A lock picking mechanism enters into the lock pick, but tendrils, both their ghost like siblings, reach out, guiding the lock pick. Am I? And they seem angry. And you see that the lock unhinge. Before your eyes, Wyatt. And the magic it, dissipates. Can I tell my Wyatt, siblings are there too? Or no? Yeah. Okay. Your I mean, siblings I'm, I'm always there. Look that, but... quite concerned and agitated. I can get that feeling. And I don't know why. Potentially, and I guess like toss the chain down as I rip it off. Potentially, we will find out inside. Before, before you run inside, real quick, can I fly up and peek my head in the second story window right above where they are and just see, can I see into the building from a vantage point that maybe someone won't be looking at? Yeah, it's pretty murky because the windows have not been, you know, washed in quite some time. Uh, you see lots of standing figures inside the warehouse. Elendra, I do, and I know you have true side up, but I would like a perception check as well for this particular thing that you were seeing. Uh, 25, and I have a passive of 22. All the way down from Mortonshire, the town up on the cliffside, leading straight down. Not in the way that, you know, um, anything alive would ever walk are floating ghosts leading all the way from the center of Morningshire to the cannery in single file. Um, Wyatt? And you see hundreds. Wyatt, the, the, the ghosts are coming. What should we do? They're already there. They're attached to the cannery. And they're just waiting. I don't understand. Um, so via my dark gift that I have, have I heard anything about whispers of ghosts being connected to things? Like anything like this? Or are they do I hear them right now? 
What and if I do, what do I hear? Oh, you hear all you hear the murmurs of hundreds of ghosts right now, but you never heard them before. And it just seems like um like inconsequential words, I guess mumblings, nothing they're actually saying. You you know, everywhere you went before, mm-hmm. since your siblings died, you would hear the spirits quieten. They mm-hmm. get quiet. Because you were around. It's kind of like uh, like children who are like snickering and then get quiet when you become aware of them. And that's how the ghosts mm-hmm. of Mordent have always been when you get nearby. And this is a very similar experience. I don't know why they're here. So they like to get quiet when I come around. All right, what are you doing? What's everyone doing? So, um, uh, there, but but basically, we know that they're in there, and the door is unlocked now. Is that yes, correct? That's All correct. Right, Bri- Briv steps oh. forward, boom, big kick, tries to bust the door open, says, "All right, everyone, put down your little smoke sticks." This is thine only chance. And Penelope. I... Sorry, just before, I mean, as that's happening, Penelope's going to wild shape into a rat and try to find another entrance so she's okay. not in the line of fire. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah, go and give me a stealth check, Penelope. With advantage, you're a rat. Dirty 20. Okay, perfect. You weasel in. You also, at the same time, Briv, you you knock down the double doors. And you both see the same thing at the same moment. You see about... Um, yeah, about 80 constructs just standing there in an empty warehouse. Some of them are warforged. Some of them are experiments that look like golems. Some of them just look like a gnome pasted them together with wax and sap and they're just standing lifeless with your true sight Alundra you see that there there is no magic to them and all the ones that were warforged were killed there's clear signs of violence and all the ones that were golems uh uh have had to spell magic cast upon them. From my vantage point, as Briv busts in, do I see any movement of maybe 12 gunmen hiding behind warforged bodies? <laughs> uh, none of them are in there, but there is a back office. And you can uh, hear the sound of lots of like clamoring and screaming and like broken vials being broken and stuff like that. Screaming, like. Someone's being attacked. Angry like yelling. Happy screams. Mm, not happy screams. Uh, just angry yelling and panic. Uh, Do we all hear this? Or Kira hears it more than anybody else, but yes. <laughs> uh, through the telepathic bond, we'll be telling everybody. Yeah. And the, the office, first floor, second floor? Uh, the office extends from the first floor to the second floor. Uh, Penelope's, Penelope's going to rat herself up there. <laughs> Does okay. appear here just because she's she's above or uh, or no, Carrie just, just has like a perceptive. really high perception. I have, I have a thirty passive perception, so right, right. gotcha. I do yeah. have a twenty four, but I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, okay. but yeah, I'll I'll through the telepathic bond, and then for Wyatt's sake, I'll say uh, there's screaming and yelling coming from the office over there. Let us surround them. And then I will do that again and say what I just said again, where this time they can hear me. <laughs> I have concerns about these constructs here. You will see Wyatt's, like, his entire form, especially if you have really good perception, you notice he gets, like, a half an inch taller all of a sudden. Um, as the bottoms of his feet kind of grow, like, a very, very small pair of uh, wheels. Uh, just a little bit to like make him a little faster as I cast long stride on myself. Okay. Nice. Um, the office is, is like in a corner of the building. No, it's the full back of the building. Okay. And do I see any doors or any windows leading into it? 
There are windows leading into it, yeah. Are there stairs? There are stairs as well. Is there any mechanism between the ghosts that are coming to the cannery and the, the construct bodies? Like, is there a, a specific doorway that they come through? Is there a machine? Is there a... a, a, a a docking huddle. Port. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the way in the back. And it's, it's, it is next to the office, but there is a, a sectioned off area around a mirror. And there is a war forged body standing upright facing that mirror. With your true sight, you see a ghost on the other side of the mirror. You see a uh, magic that is a uh, transmutation kind of glowing off the mirror. And so this gilded golden frame. And you see a line of warforged set up in front of it. I'm uh, over the telepathic bond. I'm going to say, I, I believe that there is a, a, a the, this mirror is the mechanism by which these ghosts are inhabiting these bodies. Mm -hmm. um, I think Perhaps we should shatter it? I, I don't know if they're angry that they're here, or... Do the ghosts that I've seen seem resentful of being here? Do they seem comfortable? Do they seem... They seem oh, angry they at seem us? they seem excited to be here. Okay. I don't... I don't... If this is a way for them to come back, I think that's fine. I hate the fact that they're destroying other Warforged to make this happen, but I think that's a later problem. We should Perhaps probably deal with the people in the- I just don't want us to get surrounded around the back by these creatures. I don't hear any of this because it's telepathic. I'm going to the back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. You... yeah, I've crawled through the window and I'm gonna <laughs> fly on over there to help. Um, I'm, I'm happy to include you in that doors. telepathic bond if you'd like. That's something we can. He doesn't know what's. He doesn't do. know what's happening. That's all. He he yeah. has not. There has not been any inkling of people talking telepathically. He gets waited, and then he starts. Well, to... if you're very perceptive, Briv does this every time he talks telepathically. So you might have picked up on that, but you might have thought he was just in pain. So uh, uh, why give me a strength check as you get to the door of the office? <laughs> just just strength. It doesn't matter. Uh, plus athletics. Yeah. Okay. That's the okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you 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 kick it, and then you probably realize that you could just use. Wait, I could use a gun. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. If I if I if I realize that it's like locked or I can't get in, I just doom 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 immediately. Um, yeah. at at the at the handle of the lock to like break it and like get in. Yeah, you bust open the lock. Yeah. Okay. What's your armor class, buddy? Nineteen. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Mm -hmm. As That's soon as, as I hear shots, I'm going to drop what I'm doing and rush toward everyone. Wow. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, for those viewing at home, I have rolled three ones. Oh. So those are oh, all wild oh, magic oh, spells. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> yikes. Prepare for that's, the chaos. That's always fun. Yay. When the DM gets chaos rolls, you know. Yeah, that's when you have... I'm assuming items. you're immune to poison on on some level there, Wyatt. I'm, re I'm re yeah. Uh, I am technically by the wording of being a warforged. Uh, I have advantage of, of just, of, on saving throws against being poisoned. I have resistance to poison damage. I'm immune Oof. to disease though. Uh, all right, you you take 12 points of piercing damage as all these bullets, though mm -hmm. they they must be panicked for sharpshooters. They just shoot past you. The, how many hit? One. Good. What was the, uh, I need? Uh, well, if it adds all the ones are going through as that one goes through, you see Wifer just scream um, as my profession, my AC goes up. Um, so if it go, if it didn't, if it was under 25, didn't hit. Okay. No, sorry, that 24. Bolt, that, 24 uh, that, bolt, that bullet misses as well. Yeah. It screams of the bullet until the bullet just pauses in the air and a couple of other bullets come at the same time and they all, and you see this is why it busts through the door. You just see kind of this spectral uh, echo around all of these shells as they come at Wyatt and they just stop midair and fall to the ground. Very Matrix. My uh, sibling did not like that. 
Why? I'm going to give you a surprise. Yeah, everyone's got surprise. So, but why you're leading up the charge? Everyone else roll initiative. Okay. The one who would have hit me, my gun goes straight towards their head. Boom, boom, okay. Boom, three times. Gotcha. Um, uh, that's a one. <laughs> oh. So it's a three. Uh, I'm gonna Ooh, roll. I'm, I'm gonna roll initiative as well, just to get that in there. Is that not twenty? Uh, no, dirty. Okay. Not bad. Could have been a lot better. Twenty-one for Briv. Seven for Briv. I'm logging it. Yep. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I need to check one thing. Okay. Penelope. Eleven. Arkira. Seventeen. Riddle, 20. And Wyatt? 17. That's it's coming away momentarily. That's very tell. low for me. Something tells me your dexterity is uh, way better than mine. What you got? Um, Who, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, plus five. Yeah, Wyatt goes before Rakira. Okay, so... So what's your total, Wyatt? We Four. both got a 17. His dexterity uh, is just gotcha. way better than mine, so. Okay. Uh, all right, Wyatt, you I'll go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm making it and then easy for Riv you. will be next. Um, Whittle got 20. What did uh, Briv get? has a 21. Oh, Briv got a 21? For some yep. reason, I got that wrong. Sorry. Here, it's hey, coming before, your way momentarily, Todd. I've, I've got it coming. Before chaos ensues, can I just look at the Warforge that's made out of um, metal and, and sap? and gum and just put my hand on its shoulder? None of them are rent. These maybe were other gnome experiments or something else or or loose experiments at creating constructs, but no, none of them are rent. The, yeah. okay. Oh, sorry. Um, the lowest roll I got is a 19. <laughs> okay. Does it hit? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I just lied to you. The lowest roll I got was in... 18. Nope. 18 hits. Okay, yeah, that was three shots with sharpshooter. And uh, all at, all squarely at one? Also, I mean, I'm I'm going to start shooting and if I if I see life worth go down, yeah, I'm yeah, going absolutely. for a second. I'm going yeah, to so, so I'll, I'll do I'll do all the uh, the damage separately. Okay, go go and roll the uh, um, damage. So, the first shot, oh, that's a horrible roll. Can I roll, roll any of those? No. Mm. Ew. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'm just making sure. I don't think I can. Yeah, no. 19 for the first attack? For the first uh, uh, damage? 19 for the first damage? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Where do you want to shoot them? Uh, and, uh, uh, dead in the head. I, I am aiming to to brain these people. Ye- uh, Wonder you are watching ghosts get made. Uh the first one in his line of sight that shot at him that actually almost hit him just drops to the ground as a bullet pierces its skull. Next one, that is 24. Another one drops. Uh, next one, um, another 19. You shoot another one right in the head and it falls on top of a warforged body as it does so and another ghost kind of erupts out of it. Are all of these humans? They're all humans. Okay. Some of them missing teeth. All of them l- just look like henchmen. They're rough between their 20s and 40s. Um, some of them have like, you know, lead cap teeth. Uh, That's for the surprise round. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's three attacks that I can do. All right, Briv, what are you doing? Um, so how many individuals are left, creatures are left in there? There are, uh, 12 minus three, so, yeah. Okay, so just, uh, spaced about the room? Yeah. Uh, is, is there a place where I can get to two of them at the same time? Absolutely. It, it is a packed room. Oh, it's packed. So can I get them within... Um, can I get them within 10? F- How many can I get within 10 feet of me? Uh, I, I'll say half. Okay. Uh, you see, uh, I, 
I told thee to put down thy smoke sticks and I'm going to run in and then I'm going to just kind of pull back and Nethery's explosion and shards of metal go out in all directions in 10 feet. It's going to require a dexterity saving throw of, uh, let's see, that is, um, sorry, let me look at my, um, it's going to be 17. Okay. Lots of failure. All right, we'll go and roll your damage. Uh, 32 points of slashing damage. Yep, half of them fall to the ground dead. Uh, describe it. So uh, I run up uh, between them. I told thee to put down thine smoke sticks. And as I pull back my arms, you just see shards of metal just snake out of my skin slashing all about around it goes out about uh you know 10 feet and then it comes back through them and comes into uh my body at that point in time and then they all just like little kind of cuts and scrapes and then they all fall over why you are like moving forward almost in slow motion as you just gun down three without and without, w- with complete and utter ease, and then you see Briv walk out and this metal explode out of his body and almost in slow motion as it completely misses you, but slashes through all of these bodies that are in your way and then sucks back into him at the same time. And those bodies just drop and hit the ground. Whittle, what are you doing? How many are left? Uh... Oh boy. So there were like 12 three? to start? And yeah. Briv killed six, and Wyatt killed three. Yeah. So there's three left. There's, there's three, three left. left. Okay. Um, Whittle is going to motion her hands and. And you just see this dark gray cloud billow underneath the doorway and into the small room um, as she sculpt spells cloud kill. And Tell holds... me about Cloud Kill. <laughs> oh, Whittle is not playing around. Holy crap. Cloud Kill, uh, you create a 20 foot radius sphere of poisonous yellow green fog centered on a point you choose within range. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's three left. And. And so this poisonous cloud is just, like, sculpting around Wyatt and Briv at the same time? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And Briv knows that he's immune to poison now, and he starts kind of just, like, taking some... (laughs) Every time you try, it moves away from you, though. (laughs) Whittle sees what Briv's doing on the corner of her eye and just kind of... (laughs) I'm trying to concentrate here, Briv. uh... (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you find Briv's attempts to... Huff cloud kill <laughs> <laughs> to be difficult. Um, so as sh- she is sort of sculpting the poison rain that's coming down in this very small room around the three targets, she says to them, Why are you trying to inhabit these Warforged bodies? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you saying that? Why are you killing them? As she kills them. (laughs) No, they're they're in this sort of cone. If you don't tell me, I'm going to kill you. Uh, you, uh, Wait, how long does cloud kill last? Ten minutes. Oh, that's screwed up. Roll intimidation with advantage. Yes. Wow, that's messed up. We just that is gunned dark. down three Wait, wait, friends. wait. Is Cloud Kill yep. uh, evocation? I do have to ask. Now, rule of cool. Oh. I'm letting it happen. It's Oh, no, it's Conjuration. No, nah, I'm letting and it happen. It, I'm letting it. You don't, I'm letting, to, you don't have to, but no, with advantage, it's no, 10. No, it's too cool. It's too <laughs> creepy and cool. Roll your intimidation with advantage. It's 10 with advantage. <laughs> Mildly intimidating. Yeah, uh, so it seems like you're staving off the cloud kill. It just kind of just boom. Like for a minute, it feels like you kind of stopped it from happening. Go and roll your damage. (laughs) (laughs) It all worked out. 26. And it's a con save of 17. If they save, they take half. Yeah, uh, they just 
burn and melt away as uh, this green kind of ochre that gas kind of just enters into their lungs and they fall down to the ground dead. And then you hear screams from the other side of the wall at the same time. You're already in there, uh, Penelope. And you see rat holes into another room. I take them. I go. <laughs> you just scurry. Okay. I go. Yeah, all the humans are dead in this particular room. Uh, Penelope, you rush in, and uh, technically you're out of combat, everyone, everybody. Uh, as Penelope rushes in, the screams, we're hearing them from through a door, through a... Like, how do we get to where screaming is happening? Uh... Everyone can give me an insight check, obviously. Alindra, because you have true sight, you have advantage. It specifically is good for, tr like, hidden doors, correctly? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you see a hidden door. Oh, outlined right. almost in a blue, greenish aura. There's a, another door there. I uh, rolled my first natural one. Oh, oh no. no. I, I, I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> Yay! I rolled uh, 25. We're gonna have so many wild magic surges just, later. Just so many, just way too many. Yeah, so, I'm terrified. So my my insight check is a thirty. But but Alindra sees the door, so I'm assuming. Did you see the door? And I'm yeah. gonna point you to it. I'm gonna take a look at it. Can I tell how it works? Is it a regular? Is there a mechanism to it, or? Yeah, you can see the mechanism mechanism to it. Sorry, I'm reading these. I, I didn't realize my uh, chat wasn't moving. I ah. apologize. Oops, so, auto scroll. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, there's a lot there. You rolled a lot of ones, and so there's a lot of chaos. All of you go complete. There's an arc of uh, electric energy as you, like, you, why are you just shooting around the room? You hit a few magical objects uh, as Valid. they pierce them. And there are a few explosions. All of you go invisible suddenly, which is a bit I, weird. I like how the train sharpshooter accidentally hits stuff and Briv <laughs> just buffaloes in there and like shoots metal everywhere. But it was the sharpshooter that, that hit the magic objects. But see, what happened That's was when I shot through the third individual, it went through their skull got it, got it. and hit the thing in the back, <laughs> which it. started a chain reaction. There you go. Oh... <laughs> Also through the through the mist of this uh, this cloud kill, a portal opens up and you see a skeleton playing in a harpsichord, a very pleasant and charming tune, and it just kind of slowly turns its head all the way 360 at you, inviting you with its hand to come into the portal. I shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll. Make an attack roll. That's no. I like portals. Can I go into the portal? It seems sure. very welcoming. 31. Yeah, you shoot right in the head. You <laughs> it drops to the <laughs> ground onto the harpsichord as well. Whittle just backs up. I uh, apologize. I did not expect that, and I don't like to be surprised. Who I don't blame you. We have wild magic surges, everyone at home. Uh, who gets to talk to a divine power for one minute? Uh, that you. is supposed to be you. That was for you. That's me? Oh, cool. Uh, well, well, I will save that for myself later on. Today. Yeah, you, you can have a chat with yourself and uh, find out how you're doing. <laughs> I'm going to see how Avrin's doing. <laughs> Are you excited for Loki tonight? Uh... You have to ask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the answer is yes, and yes, he's a variant. Uh, okay, so... Uh, right. Moving ahead. <laughs> so you hear screams from another room. Uh, Penelope, you enter that room. You look around and you see all of these humans like choking and gasping. And there's one not gasping, one creature inside of a large glass dome walking on a mechanical body. It's uh -huh. kind of Kind of, kind of it's uh, the way its body is, even though it's mechanical, it seems like horrified and, de and standing back. But it has a large glass dome over what appears to be its head through this gas. And all of the cloud kill has moved through the cracks of the, the door and also the wall. Uh, Penelope will 
pop out of being a rat and say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And she's going to cast a warding wind. She's going to, no, she's going to, sorry. Okay, control winds. She's going to create an updraft to lift the fog. Nice. Or cloud. Okay, you do so. So hopefully everyone stops choking. Everyone's out of combat. So you'd had a bunch of us roll a bunch of insight checks. Is yes. that just to help see? You see the to... door. Okay. Yeah. Um, before, while Alindra's figuring out how to open the door, I want to take a quick look around this room. Uh, what do I see? Bags and bags of gold. And on top of this, if if you do kind of an investigation of this room right now, you find, and since Detect Magic is still up, correct, Jen? Yes. Yeah, you, and I will go ahead and just tell you this now, but using Identify later, you find a manual of golems, you find a pipes of the sewers, you find a ring of truth-telling, you find about 35 soul coins. Duh! Whoa. You find uh, a cloak of the bat, and you wait, find a robe. Slow down, slow down, slow down, please. 35, 35 soul coins. Yep. You find a, cloak of, a tiny little cloak of the bat and a robe of eyes. Oh. Uh, Can you tell us what the cloak of the bat does again? It does bat things. <laughs> I'll, I'll get this info to everybody. Um, yeah, I think... That, Orc here is like scanning the room looking for answers, but isn't doing a, a an intense investigation of, of anything. So as soon as the door is open, she wants to continue to where there was screaming. You find you also see chests and chests, like little tiny chests, not like big ones, but like about this size of gold. And some of these look like heirlooms. And there are you there are just dead bodies littered all around you, especially you, Wyatt, as well. And you, you, Wyatt, just kind of looking around, there are diagrams of war-forged anatomy. Uh, you see kind of just like blueprints of how to make create golems. Mm -hmm. But mainly, it seems like all this research around you is geared towards how to take souls from other beings and shove them into war-forged. And there out of, are, yeah, out of curiosity, especially per my dark gift, uh, I specifically hear a lot of the, the souls that I have killed. Oops. Um, are they, I mean, they're probably like, what the heck's going on? But also, are they speaking at all about what this is? I'm going to just see if they mention what all of this could be or why or who they work for. Anything like that. Uh, like, yeah, like, oh, someone they're can be panicked mad, uh, and they're confused. They don't even know they're dead. The uh, ones they just killed. Golems was the manual for iron. Yeah, they seem very confused, and mm -hmm. they're talking about like this was just this. This is just a job. This was just you know we're just trying to find. Maybe wait, wait, wait. wait am I dead? We, we, need to, we need to enter into some of these things so we can get across the border, so we can leave, finally. Maybe maybe, maybe it'll work for us. You know, we, we're smart. We're all smart folk. He we can puts probably get two and two together. They are trying to leave. They are trying to use the newfound bodies to leave Morden. And go where? Anywhere. If they are stuck, then if they can leave. I don't know blame them. But, but, Sorry, was it just Wyatt that heard this? Just Wyatt. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that it sounds like they're just trying to kill people to take their bodies, I don't think that would be a bad thing, but... I mean, does that even work? Can um, they actually get out if they pull off this plan? I do not think so. And I think about the two that we already saw. Someone tried to use the bodies of Y4 and Y9. They were not successful. When you look at all these magical items and all this gold and these rings, it's all 
very personalized stuff as if the ghosts led them to like secret chambers where their treasure mm. was or where their ancestral gold might have been kept um, or something, some kind of magical item that was of importance to them in life. All for the chance to perhaps leave Ravenloft. Hmm. Uh, through the telepathic bond, because I'm assuming we're still trying to get the door open. Penelope, are you okay in there? Yeah, Peachy Keen. Yeah, about that. No, not Peachy Keen. <laughs> oh, no. I need an uh, intelligence saving throw. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, great. It's an eight. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, you are stunned for one minute. You take 15 points of psychic damage as you push all of this toxic cloud kill away and all these bodies hit the floor. There is one creature, one mechanical creature with a large bubble to glass dome. You see a brain in a jar floating on a mechanical body. Oh, no. And it thanks you by stunning you. Great, great, great. <sighs> And you hear Penelope scream from the other side of the door. Penelope, open the door. Uh, Alindra, you've figured out the door. Cool. I go to open it, and it's. I have trouble. As I slide it, my fingers are stuck to it like uh, Spider-Man style. I'm having a hard time prying them off of the door. Oh, that's, that's quite uncomfortable. Why is it doing that? Was there a trap that we didn't notice? Everything's uncomfortable Penelope? here. And I managed to get my hands off and and head toward, uh, toward Penelope. Yeah, at this point, you've probably seen a lots of really cool documents and like scrolls and all kinds of stuff, and you're just like, just it's all over your hands. Like you may have torn up some important magical stuff. <laughs> you'll you'll piece it together mending, later. Mending, 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 mending. mending, mending. mending. <laughs> it is panic for you. <laughs> so, um, but more importantly, Penelope. Yeah, uh, you you open the door. As as Wyatt begins to go uh, closer, um, the the souls that are all around begin to just kind of just discombobulate him, and he instantly incapacitates. Incapa he becomes incapacitated, and he is sleep. Oh, is that your? Oh no. Uh, Wyatt. Wyatt. And why are you incapacitated again? Look at his wild magic. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> I just happened to scroll up like, what? Oh, no. Well. Oh, no. Um. Oh, shoot. Um. um. <laughs> um you want to take your white? I'll go after Penelope. And I'm going to continue down the hall towards Penelope because she seems to be in more imminent danger than Wyatt. Yeah, I mean, I uh, as 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 I pass uh, Wyatt, I will um, just like kind of fiddle around and try to f and and like think that I find an on button. I know that there probably is not one, but I think that I do and uh, cast uh, remove curse. Okay, on Wyatt. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You 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 knock Wyatt out of it. It's not I'm time sorry. to shut down now. Why we need to go. My apologies. That was unexpected. That's all right. Weird oh. things happen with us Didn't all just... the time. I don't think I want to be with you all the time. And I'll just continue going. <laughs> all right. You go into the room. Yeah, I think. Uh, Penelope, go and give me another, another intelligence saving throw. Oh, no. <laughs> Can I flame stride over to Penelope and, and pick her up and run away with her? <laughs> you, you, yes, you can. Seventeen. Oh, okay. You're out of it. Ah. You <laughs> all see before you this creature that is a brain in the jar on top of a amalgamation of warforged and constructs, desperately clawing at the window to try to escape. That should not be a thing. What is that? Penelope? I don't it... know. Who are you? Oh, uh, I'm a, a 
I'm a victim. I, uh, I, uh, they made me, and uh, they created this, the, this thing. I, I don't even entirely know who I am. I have a passive of nineteen. Passive inside of nineteen. Yeah, he's, they're lying. <laughs> um, when I flame strided over to Penelope, um, that was twenty points of damage. No, Where, you're not I, wherever her. I stopped. If if anything was attacking her. Yeah. Uh, okay. It you 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 run past the brain in the jar and you kind of set it on fire for a moment as it's being questioned. <laughs> so. So we need information. And if thou canst give us information, we might allow thee to keep thine pathetic life. I will I will give you all the information you possibly need to know. Are you lying again? If you do it once more, I will make sure every bullet in my revolver meets your gun, your your brain. And I hate to say it, that would be many bullets. <laughs> Again, you all notice I only had one bullet in my revolver. I recall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna doubt you for that. That's not gonna happen. Nope. We've all seen really weird <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those. Oh, okay. And then you've done some magic gun stuff. So okay, cool. <laughs> we just think you're cool. Or Kara, since you have the most alarming eyesight. You and hearing see, and smell and yep, 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 yep. <laughs> you you see a piece of paper on the desk behind them from it and you see the crest of a strad von Servich. okay and there are several letters okay something glows extremely bright in your eyes Londra almost blindingly bright in a chest mm -hmm. on the desk behind the brain in the jar. I'm going to help you any way I can. I, I, I'm just a victim here. Uh, they just made me, you know, and uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very sorry for everything that's been happening. Is is the I'm a victim here, is that the truth? No, no you totally lying. What's the thing that's so bright? on the desk. Can I tell anything about it? You can't see through the chest. Oh, okay. It's locked away in a chest and I'm it's shining that brightly through the chest. Yes. How big is the chest? Small. Under 10 pounds? Certainly. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mage hand that. Okay. <laughs> Just grab it. Yeah. In fact, I will... Uh, and if Briv sees this, he's going to just get like loud and threatening uh, to, to the brain thing to try to distract. Um, and Orkira is going to lean over to Wyatt and say, yeah, you probably know that was a lie too, right? I am aware. Should I shoot? Uh, let's try to get something out of this creature. Maybe if we confront it, it will start to tell us some truths. You uh, see the blue crystalline eyes are slowly like, it's almost like when a bottle that is like maybe clear or blue gets filled with like a red liquid. Um, it is slowly becoming red. Uh, there's some letters behind the brain. I uh, also pick those up too. And th like, I'll grab those, throw them on top of the chest and then pick it up and go. Okay, you, you grab it. Okay. Wyatt, don't shoot. I can Did he just say my name? Yep. He shoots. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. And you see him at that moment reaching for a button in his own arm. Go ahead and roll. Okay. Actually, uh, roll I the am... initiative. Just roll it. Just Everybody for you. or just Wyatt? No, just Wyatt. Okay. 18. I can roll <laughs> better than this. You're faster. Uh, I'm a lot faster if the All dice right. are nicer. Roll the hit. Um. Cool. I'm making... Mm, mm, hold on. Because I also have a passive perception of 24. So I'm going to... Yes. I'm I... going to make this a... A winged shot. I'm going to try to aim and aim at a part um, at his uh, of, as, of the form that's just going to make him crumple. Okay. Um, 
being a warforged, I'm pretty good at that. Um, you know what? Yeah, sharpshooter. You got me messed up. Ooh, I don't know, actually. I maybe shouldn't have done sharpshooter. Um, um, that does a 17 hit. It does. <sighs> nice. Um, that, who Jesus. Uh, on one, I'm, I'm assuming it's just one attack, one shot. Uh, that is 30 points of damage. And what does it do? Um, he needs to make a strength saving throw. Um, I have foreseen this moment. Okay. Uh, and he gets a four <laughs> on the save. <laughs> yes! And, and specifically, like, there's an effect to this, right? So can you describe that to me? Yes, yes. Um, it is a winged shot. Um, they have to make a strength saving throw or they are knocked prone. You shoot it right at the base of the neck and the entire jar of the brain in the jar falls off of the body and rolls to the ground and its body crumples. I grab the jar. <laughs> you gra <laughs> Briff grabs the jar, the brain. <laughs> I got your brain. I got your brain. Yeah, yeah. The body's just on the ground, lifeless. And you got the brain. But I got the brain. Now art I'm... thou going to behave thyself? Are you like shaking the jar? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, the worst migraine. <laughs> okay. I, I, again, I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I was just. Who are you? <laughs> uh. I'm better than you. Better than That's you try to answer. take me down. No. This I'm not I'm not trying to assume a gender, but only a cis man would be like this. He just got shot off of his body yeah. and he's and he's still gloating as and he's being, being held, held by, by, a, by a big by metal half orc. Who can half -orc. Crush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um at this moment Orkira gets some divine inspiration from her god as I would like to cash in that wild magic surge where I get to converse with the divine power for a moment. Okay. Love the phoenix to tell me exactly what we need to do to get this brain to talk to us and give us some information. Oh, better than that. <laughs> I mean, if the phoenix wants to give me you more, that'd be great. flashes in the fire because there's, you, you look, you're suddenly drawn to Whittle. And the fact that her boots are on fire from flame stride and you see images in the fire and you see uh, this man uh, like almost like parchment, translucent skin, refusing to die, finding a way to live on, creating a construct, creating a jar to put his own brain in. You see him digging up Warforged, hunting them by himself, killing Warforged, killing constructs, and slowly creating a, a more a larger network and promising rich people and Mordent a ways of a, a means to escape either death itself uh, will be an escape from Ravenloft. Or also, hey, if you just die now, I can I can let you die and I will find you a way out of Ravenloft by entering Warforged or Constructs with these ghost forged entities. And you'll be able to tra you know, traverse the mists and finally escape this torment. And it's just been a scam this entire time. And experiment after experiment and then you see correspondence with a Strahd von Sarovich about how to enter a soul into a construct to escape Ravenloft. And where and this, you, this person is telling Strahd that or Strahd is giving this person information? This person, no, Strahd is asking this person and this person's name is Irving Bander. And you know everything you need to know about Irving Bander. Why does the name Irving Bander need it mean anything to you? DM, does the name Irving Bander mean anything to me? No. I, I look very, at, yeah. 
yeah. quickly just for, for time's sake or here oh but you feel everything. the rage your two siblings rage oh oh uh, oh i am just i am you see the the red still forming in the eyes and why it just says if you have anything else to say to them you probably have about 25 seconds before i shoot or kira will lay out everything she just saw and then uh bookend it with yeah uh, my god the one that does resurrection and destruction doesn't like it when others play around and i'm gonna uh, walk oh, sorry, I, sorry. I know this looks terrible you just simply don't understand i'm gonna walk to Try us. yes why no go ahead. yeah i'm just walking towards brave as they're talking I want to make. I don't want to just cut him off. So, I can always bring your siblings back. It's a lie. He, what, if, what if it wasn't? Are you willing to, to give up? Show your siblings be ghosts forever. You need me. Do I get the vibe from the rest of the party that they're over it, or they're actually listening? Uh, um, that is on you. The, I, yeah, I, I know. I know. I'm acting. Yeah, party. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you see Whittle pull a throne out from her bag of holding <laughs> and sit on it and stare very intently at the brain. Uh, Wyatt, if you look over to Kara, she's listening, but then she looks at you, and after everything that she's just said, says, "He lied to so many people. Don't." Don't take a deal with somebody who's just going to try to screw you over. There are other ways. There's always. Wait, wait, wait. You all seem like heroes. Before he's even done, <laughs> in Briv's hand, and I look directly at Briv, say, my apologies. I have the gunner feet, which means I don't have disadvantage at five feet. I just unload into the brain. And you do. Some and of the bullets probably go through your hand brave i'm and, sorry and irving goes silent <gasps> oh and the jar explodes and liquid just flows everywhere you muted you're there silent, silent. Brave. You got brave. you're so scared my mouth open <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a lot of liquid is in your mouth <laughs> brain liquid ew ew <laughs> Probably some formaldehyde in there. Just not, <laughs> not healthy. Man. I wish, I wish this, this person was actually trying to help and not destroying other creatures in order to trade out a life for a life. You do realize we just took 12 lives that will never be able to come back. I know. Good for them. They deserved it. I don't know if they deserved it, but they attacked us and we, we were, we have a right to defend ourselves. We did. And this, this one was killing other Warforged constructs to lie to other people, to trap them in situations that was untenable. But we know now that Strahd wanted that knowledge. Yep. Wyatt? feel both your siblings whisper to you and they feel real they feel like they are relaxed not at peace yeah i don't know that your siblings would ever be at peace no no, no. they feel better but no but they seem kind of meanly happy not like mean towards you yeah but they're cackling and you feel them push you towards the box in Alindra's hand. I will... And you see your sibling go next to Whittle and try to point her towards the box as well. I do not know your name, but you. As I look at Whittle. Oh, it's, it's, it's Whittle. I see. Easy to remember because I'm little. And it rhymes. I don't see the correlation. Regardless. And I look at Alindra. 
I believe there is something within that box for you. Wynan has shown me, or at least they believe so. Um, I will take the letters and put, put them in my in my bag, and I will use my using my mage hand set the the box down, and at a distance, I will open it. Far, far away from us. All right, Kara, you drop to the ground, unconscious, and you see a giant raven flapping its wings above you with nothing but the moonlight behind it, and it erupts into flames. As Alindra opens up a small chest, and you all see the holy symbol of ravenkind. And that's our adventure. Thank you, everyone, for watching Heroes of the Plains. Thank you so much to CB for being on the show and being Yay! such an amazing guest and such an amazing character. I I, I'll, I kill for Wyatt. Uh, but Wyatt's <laughs> going to do the killing for me anyway. Yeah, he'll kill for you. <laughs> Well, now we now we got to get Wyatt out of here. That's we got to take care of their siblings. Like I've just added a, a bunch of things to my list of things to do. <laughs> We're adopting the entire o -O Y family. All twelve of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ten. I, I Ten. Am, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am hoping to see more of Wyatt in the future for sure. Uh, all right, let's go around the room. Uh, let's start with CB because CB was such an amazing guest and wow, a good character. <laughs> Seriously, I love it. Cheers. He's a lot of fun. Uh, hi, yeah. My name is Omega Jones, also known as Critical Part. Critical Part across all social media channels, Active Vocalist, Hot Mess Incarnate. You can catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Critical Bart, where I'm a Twitch partner streaming lots of random stuff like Dead by Daylight and Overwatch and anything, honestly. Uh, and catch me all over um, playing TTRPGs and many different places. Uh, if I can, I want to shout out uh, tomorrow um, at 3 p.m. Pacific. Was that correct? Yes, 3 p.m. Pacific over on the TD, TW, D Universe, The Walking Dead uh, Universe Twitch channel. I will be DMing The Con of the Dead, uh, which is a convention with zombies. Who knows what's <laughs> going to happen? Uh, Sounds so awesome. So, yeah, check that out if you want. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Uh, that's me. Don't dead inside. Uh, or <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't dead alive inside. Don't dead live side. What? Wait, uh, what? Lauren Urban. Wait, don't, don't alive dead inside. Wait. Don't be dead. Hi, I'm Lauren. Don't Urban. be dead inside. <laughs> don't be dead inside. No, we don't. love you. We like you alive. We we inside. we like you and alive. Outside. Yes, please. Take care of yourself. Take, you know, make sure that everything's okay. Get get some water, get a stretch. We we like you alive inside. Also, if you want to find out more about me, you can find me at Double Learn on the Twitters. Um tomorrow for Idol Champions fans, we've got our Summer Spectacular. Yay! Hey. Come by. We're doing a whole big day of streaming, all kinds of announcements, all kinds of fun things. Uh, I might even have an announcement myself. Yay! Also, if you want to see this character on another show a year earlier and find out why I know so much about undead and zombies and uh, vampires and things, come see me on D4 on Sundays on the Rock Punch ATL channel at 4 p.m. Pacific. Thank Hope. you. Hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. Okay, bye. No. Aw. <laughs> and you should follow her and you should listen to her on Attackers of Opportunity. Yeah, and also, <laughs> yeah. that was enough Anywhere for they me. find podcasts uh, can Hope, be found. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hope is a fantastic D&D player. Hope is a really great musician, a great singer as well, who has done <laughs> vocals woman. for a bunch mm -hmm. of content for us in the past and hopefully in the future as well. And also is a motion capture artist. And it's alarming. And I'll, I'll be completely frank kind of freaking disturbing when you do like act out an orc and stuff like that <laughs> like it freaks me out that you become this different creature so yeah. that's hope lavelle just Thank a super you. nice overly talented yeah. annoyingly talented i would say uh, person. <laughs> and so. speaking of uh becoming a different creature you can check out some choose your own tutorial adventure videos on mm. demiplane.com right now where hope lended her vocal talents and likeness uh, to a CG adventurer that hopefully we're going to meet that character one day. It's like Ranger Hope, and uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of awesome. So check that out. Free range hope. Uh, <laughs> Adam Bradford. Hope, hope on the range. <laughs> I'm Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO here at Demi Plane, and you can catch me on Twitter at Bad Eye Adam. We did just uh, release some uh, very short tutorial videos to talk about what Demi Plane is, so you can check those out and get a little bit of a tour. We also had our absent member tonight, Mr. B. Dave Walters, participated in that too. So check those out, demiplane.com. 
my wait, wait, my wife. I almost said that like a, a, a my one arm man. Wife. Get away from my wife! <laughs> my wife. <laughs> like, <laughs> you just John Mulaney me. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, y- yeah. So. <laughs> um, I'm I'm his wife. Uh, Megan Kendrick. <laughs> and that's the only thing that matters. <laughs> oh. Whoa. No, I, this um, is a joke. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah nope, Megan, totally Megan Kendrick. Oh, God. That's my only personality trait. Um, I, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Megan Kenrecht, where I occasionally uh, also stream Overwatch and Dark Alliance with uh, CB here. And you can also find me over on Todd Kenrick's YouTube channel, where we talk about all things D&D. And we got a bunch of stuff coming up and the Jen Yes, Kretschmer. indeed. Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Uh, on Wednesdays, you can find me on uh, Vampire the Nightlife. Uh, this week we are off. We're taking a mid-season break, but we will be back next week uh, playing Vampire on uh, Renegade's uh, channel. That's on, Play Renegade on Twitch. Um, I'm one of the authors on Candlekeep Mysteries. I am the creator of the Accessibility and Gaming Resource Guide, which you can find in my pinned tweet. Um, I am a writer, producer, actor, do the things on the places. I've got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. I still can't talk about it. <laughs> NDA this Life. Last. Yeah, and, NDA Life. Oh, uh, and I am Todd Kenrick. I am an alligator loki variant yeah uh, th- thank you so much for watching uh thank you for being such wonderful players i had to do almost nothing i can't believe i get to be part of this uh you're all wonderful characters thank you everyone at home for your wild magic surges if we didn't get to them we will get to them next adventure uh there were many uh thank you so much for watching bye bye, Later, bye. bye.